there's a great Christmas time movie coming to theaters December 7, 2007. It's called Noel, a wonderful film with the heart and soul not usually expected from Hollywood. It's a positive, tender message dealing with guilt and grace. The film's lead character, Father Keen, is sent by the Archdiocese to a small fishing village in Cape Cod. Some call him the hitman, hired to close down small struggling churches. What he didn't expect was the impact this odd assortment of parishioners would have on his life. This movie has everything, humor, intrigue, and lots of drama. Take a look at this clip. Father Joyce, I have not yet reached a decision regarding the future of this parish. Father Joyce! Simeon! Perhaps you have a point. Perhaps this, this crash could, as you say, fix all that. But I think you need more than life-size figurines, don't you? I think you need you. And you, and you, all of you. Think about it. A real Mary, a real Joseph, real wise men, real shepherds. Outside, Christmas Eve, it'd be the talk of the community. People who haven't been to church in years might just come back. Who knows, after the holidays, this place could be full again, alive. Profitable, productive, rather. But you don't have much time, do you? So let me suggest you hold auditions here tomorrow night, don't you think? Excellent. <laughs> you asked for a chance. There it is. David, your actor, producer, writer, and director of the movie Noel. I'm sure that at one point you never thought you needed to get a hobby in addition to all that. <laughs> How did you sh juggle all those jobs at the same time? A uh, necessity. Um, I did not set out to do all those things. I, I started with just writing the story, you know, and then trying to figure out a way to get it produced. And then once you write it, of course, you know how it should be done, so you think, well, I'm going to direct it. As a director, you have to spend a lot of time and a lot of emotional energy on an actor and invest that into a person to try to get them where you want them to be. And I know this guy. I know what, what we need to see, so I'm just going to do it. So you know what makes him tick. Well, I thought I did, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I just figured, let's do it. And then producing is just a matter of you find somebody to raise the money and just telling people what we need to do. So it just, it just evolved. Well, how'd you come up with a storyline? A number of things that, um, that really started the story ticking. One was there was this amazing Christmas party on our street on Cape Cod. Now, this is an old, uh, this is an old whaling captain's, uh, a bunch of whaling captain's houses on this street. And so in, at Christmas time, these houses would all light up. Very quiet, though, because it's Cape Cod and it's very desolate. But this one family had a Christmas party every year, and it was actually the Worthington family's, Mrs. Worthington's Christmas party. It's packed with people, and, and in New England that's rare, you don't find that. And uh, it's packed with a huge variety of people. I mean, I was seeing Jamaicans and Rastafarians and Brazilians and Portuguese and, and uh, Asians, and the unity and the joy at this party struck me, and it was like, it was like you'd gone back in time. They had an old gramophone playing. These people were dancing. Kids were asleep in windows. You know, older people were dancing and talking. And it really got me thinking about how we as, as believers, as a church body, should be behaving all the time. They're doing it the way it's, it's supposed to be done. They're loving each other and enjoying each other and celebrating Christmas all at one moment. And so that really got me thinking about it. And then as I thought about you know, religion, I started thinking about how we're so hypocritical, I'm so hypocritical, and I thought, how can I show that? How can I show that and show a guy that is a hypocrite, that is guilty of something, and then save him, forgive him, redeem him, not me, but let, let this happen in the story. So did you see the theme as, as guilt and grace then? Was that more or less what yes, you were Absolutely, and, and also forgiveness. I would say forgiveness. In my mind, it was, it was about forgiveness. It was showing 
forgiveness. I believe forgiveness is the most beautiful concept, the most beautiful thing in the universe. And to try to show that with a story was what I wanted to do. Tell us a little bit about the character you played. He's a Scrooge-like guy. He's a very hardened guy who we find out is has covered up something in his past that he's haunted by. And that you, you see that pretty early on in the film. This guy's definitely struggling. He's definitely fighting something in his past. And, and in, in order to move on, he's put on some armor. I think we all do that. And he's just put on some armor and is just moving forward to try to keep himself together, to try to keep himself from falling apart. As somebody who has counseled post-abortive men, I was struck by the accuracy with how you portrayed a man's reaction to abortion. Does this come from a personal experience? No, no, it doesn't. Um, I, I just started imagining with everything I do, I, when I write or if I act in something, I just pretend that that happened to me. And I took the circumstances of what I had written and I just sort of thought about them and said, okay, this is what happened. And then you just walk in that. Yet I was also keenly aware that I can't, I've got to approach this beautifully in language and in images that would entice rather than, I want you as an audience to, to lean forward, to try to listen, to, to try to hear what's being said. If somebody whispers, I want you to lean forward. I don't want you to back up and go, ooh, I, uh, I, don't, I don't want to see this. I want to draw you in. And that's done through beautiful images, through humor, through romance, through mystery. That's the way I believe you draw people in. I, I, the verdict's still out on that theory, but we'll see. Well, I think the movie had all of those. Good, thank you. So how important do you think humor is for your movie? Anything is, is way easier to go down with humor. I didn't make this movie for a Christian audience. I made it for everybody. And so I didn't ever want it to come off as a Christian telling a story to Christians or as a Christian telling a story to everybody else because I believe the heavy issues are going to are going to have much more impact if we're laughing. <coughs> Quite God, sir, excuse me. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy shall be to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Ooh, I hated that one. Can I do it again? Savior who is Christ the Lord. Shepherds are going next, Behold then the wise the men. Handmaiden. We're trying out for wise men. Good for you. Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Behold the handmaiden. Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. I can't hear you, Jane. Behold the hand. No, I still can't hear you. I'm going to go in the back and I'm going to still be able to hear you. Oh, dear. I didn't know you ran. Are you guys allowed to run? When we return, David's daughter Brennan, who played Noel, talks about what it's like to act alongside her dad. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation.
In the movie, Brennan Wall acted the part of Noel, who keeps appearing to the lead character, Father Keen, as an unsettling reminder of his past. What was it like being in a movie? Fun. I think it was probably the funnest thing in my life, the coldest thing in my life, but it, it was, I remember um, being in a truck and telling Pop that um, whenever he wanted me to do a movie that I would, and he always, would, he always liked that thing. Was it fun working with, with Dad? Yes. There was one point in the film where you had to whisper in your dad's ear. And it was a very touching uh, scene uh, when that occurred. Now, when it came time to say your line there, you leaned over to his ear and you whispered, were you tempted to say, raise my allowance? Uh, no. No? If you had any opportunity to say anything else just for fun, what do you think it would have been? Maybe ask Poppy if the scene was over. What was your favorite scene that you played in the movie? Probably the scene where I got to smile because I had been holding in smiles the whole time and it was like the ending scene so I just I got to smile at the end and I knew it was basically the end of the movie. Usually everybody starts crying really hard at that point. Yeah, well, it, when you smiled, it said so much at the end of the story. It, it, made, it made, basically made that final statement that we were all waiting to hear. Now, was it hard not to smile during the other scenes? Yeah, I had to bite my cheeks the whole time. So that, that's usually, my cheeks were two times as puffy as they usually were. <laughs> And it worked, eh? Yep. What do you remember most about your time working on the movie? There was a boardwalk. The, he, Keen has a dream and he sees my face out in a boardwalk and it was really cold and I kept have Pop kept picking me up in a blanket and we'd keep running off for a second and then I'd have to go back out and do it all over again. So when you grow up, do you think it's it, acting is what you'd like to do, or if you thought about other jobs? Well, I, I'd i like to do acting, but if I can't do acting, then I probably would do dancing or singing, probably. Brennan made her acting debut at a tender early age. At the time of this interview, we learned she was about to celebrate her ninth birthday, so... Some of our staff have put together a little party for you for the star of the show. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brennan. Happy birthday to you. So now make a wish and blow out the candle. Not bad, not bad at all. Coming up, Carrie Wall talks about her role as a troubled small town librarian. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Each week we feature real people who deal with real life issues head on. Some of their experiences are uplifting, while others will break your heart. But in the end, the message is clear. Those who follow biblical principles on the issues of life are blessed. Become a partner with us in providing a positive, life-affirming message to help change the way the next generation values innocent human life. Please consider a generous gift to help offset the costs of producing this important quality programming. You can donate on our secure website at facinglife.tv or by calling the phone number on your screen during normal business hours. Together, we can make a real difference for life. Carrie Wall plays Marjorie Worthington, a small-town librarian with a big secret. As she tries to hold herself together, she's troubled by the presence of Father Keen, who happens to be hiding his own guarded mystery. Are you okay? I'm fine. I, uh, I have a problem. I, 
Have that as my carry shot of adrenaline, just in case. Adrenaline? It's produced naturally in the body by strong emotion. Anger, fear, love. No, I know what it is. I just didn't know that strong emotions made you breathe better. Apparently they do. And running in the cold helps your breathing? No. It makes it worse, but I figure the more I run, the stronger my lungs will become, and the you know, less I'll be affected by the asthma. It's a, it's a theory that I apply to many areas of my life. Now, you played one of the star leading roles, Marjorie Worthington. Mm -hmm. Tell me about her character. As Marjorie, I was um, a librarian, small town, um, hadn't really ever been anywhere else. Um, very sort of protected, I would say, but yet obviously a little adventurous. You know, I'm in trouble in the movie. And um, um, I, I basically, I, I've got this little system set up. I take care of my grandmother. I work at the library. Um, that's my life. And I'm dating this not so good man. <laughs> And things are not going so well, and 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 I'm I'm kind of I'm very troubled at that point, but I'm I'm conflicted, um, basically through the whole, and I'm I'm going to church with my grandmother and trying to be there for her, but yet I I don't know where my own beliefs stand in the movie. You know, it's 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 quite a uh, I don't know kind of a turmoil time in my character's life. Were there any parts of your character that paralleled your real life? Um, well, David would say I'm a very good librarian. <laughs> that, that was very parallel since I homeschool. Uh, we, I deal with books a lot, ordering books, <laughs> organizing books. No, I, not really. I mean, I'm not, um, I'm not really Marjorie. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. And I think when, you, when it comes to acting, that's, that's true, you know, your imagination does it all. And um, some, there are things I identified with, you know, the questioning, I went through a time of questioning, I mean, always, but a specifically a time of questioning in my life as far as spiritual things. And um, there are certain, certain parallels, but not overall different girl, pretty different from me. I, I tend to be much more animated, I think, too, than Marjorie is as far as me normally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think with, with Marjorie, it was, I had to be a little more, sit on myself a little bit and be calmer and a little more. Uh, well, you know, in the story, I'm dealing with some big issues. Mm -hmm. So I think that had to kind of be there and, and kind of pull me down a little bit. What was it like to work for your husband as the director of the film? It was great. He was fabulous. He's, he's, I can't, I can't go on, I don't think, about my husband enough, but, um, I wouldn't recommend a husband and wife working together unless you've been married a good 19 years like we have. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard on your, it was hard situation anyway. He was doing so many jobs. But um, as a director, he's, he's great. Well, in a very quiet moment between your character and Father King, in the midst of the party, there was a very serious discussion. And Marjorie asked Father King, what should I do? without giving away any details uh, of the movie, what do you think Marjorie was hoping to hear? I think she's hoping to hear a, a positive answer. I think, it's, I think it's in us to want life for everyone. I really do. I think that's in us, and I think um, we can try and suppress it. We can try and um, rationalize any any anything we do in our lives we can try and make an excuse for but in that moment um, I think that's what Marjorie wants to hear and I think that's what a, a person in a real situation would want to hear the positive answer which is it's always you know mm -hmm. life what does the future look like for you as an actress as a mother as a wife um, we shall see what Noel brings but um, you know I worked in the industry for 10 years before I started having children and and to come back to it in this way is such a such a pleasure to work on a part that you love and a project that you love I have four children to educate and um, that's kind of a full-time job mm -hmm. although we have learned to be very creative in our education while we were shooting the film um, we had basically filmmaking 101 but I think I'm going to continue with that that's my main 
focus right now. And if, if this brings other work, that's great too. When we come back, you know, we love critics to say, hey, this is a good movie. But that's not who I made the movie for. I made the movie for people. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. This week I sat down with David, Carrie, and Brennan Wall to talk about the soon-to-be-released film, Noel, written, directed, and produced by David. Carrie co-produced the film and also acted in a lead role. Both were joined by their daughter, Brennan, who made her acting debut as Noel. How would you define 